My name is Gavin Evans and this is my review for The Fly. And this will be a spoil filled review. So if you haven't seen it, go and watch it. Then come back and watch this review because I will be going in depth. Now my brother has never seen this movie before. He's never seen a single body horror movie. So we watched it for the first time together last night. And by the end of the movie, he was just like, ah, uh, I feel sick to my stomach. I don't think I like that feeling. And I totally get it. Like, I understand why some people might just find this movie to be gross and disgusting. And it is all those things. But it's also freaking incredible. This isn't just one of my favorite horror movies of all time. This is one of my favorite movies of all time. Period. I love it. I think it is so weird and ambitious and terrifying and well made and just perfect in every way a movie should be. And one thing I typically forget about this movie is just how long it takes to get going. It does take its time to set up the characters and the romance and the plot and it does a really great job at all of that. You know, except for the scene where the baboon is inside out, there's no real blood or guts for the first half of this movie. So I was able to get invested in everything going on. But then Seth goes through the teleportation machine and from that point forward, this movie is just horrific. You know, it starts off fine enough. He discovers he has super strengths and he can walk around on walls if he wants to. Kind of reminds me of Spider-Man though, like a much darker version of it. But then as the movie progresses, things start to get worse and worse for him as he's just slowly falling apart and it just keeps you on edge. You know, that one scene where he's at the bar and he doesn't recognize his own strengths and he breaks that guy's arm clean off, it just, there's something about that scene that really gets under my skin. And it just gets worse from that point forward. Like, you dread watching the next scene because you don't know how he's going to appear. Just how much worse is he going to be from one scene to the next. And because of that, you don't want to look, but you can't look away at the same time. It just keeps you on edge. It keeps you engaged with everything going on. And you feel the emotional weight of just watching a loved one slowly die. And there's nothing you can do about it. There's no cure. There's no nothing. He is a doomed man and you're just forced to watch it happen. And it just explores mortality in a very real sense, in a way that's very effective. Because this movie could be seen as a metaphor for illness or disease. And I think it does a great job at that. But then you're just watching this guy, his fingernails fall off. He, his ear starts to fall apart, he starts oozing this slime, he starts vomiting the acid stuff, and he's, his skin is getting worse and worse, and he's growing more and more insect hairs. And then we get to the last act where he's just completely unrecognizable. And he pukes the acid on Stethus leg, and that's a really effective moment. But then we get my favorite moment in the entire movie, well, He's trying to put Veronica in the machine. And I just want to say, his whole plot at the end of this movie is truly horrific. It gets under my skin what he wants to do to the woman he loves. And just the whole idea of it is disgusting. Like, we've seen what it did to him throughout this entire movie. And the fact that it might be even worse and he's given the same fate or trying to to Veronica... Truly terrifying, but she's pushing away and all of a sudden his bottom jaw just falls off and then the insect part of him just comes out and his skin shreds and he just becomes full fly and it's just a really disgusting, fucked up, but incredible moment. And it's just, it's gross, but it's really bloody cool and I mean that literally. But anyways, then we get uh, Stathis coming in, saving the day. And uh, Thess wakes up in the other pod and he just is coming out and he's just gone. Like he looks even worse than he did. And he just picks up the gun and 
puts it to his head, telling Veronica he wants to die. And the fact that there's still some humanity inside that giant mess makes the whole idea of this movie all the more unnerving. And then she shoots him and the movie ends. That's it. And it's just a tragic way to end their story because you do buy the relationship between Seth and Veronica and the way it progresses throughout. And then it just takes this dark turn where, like I said, there's a ton of emotional weight behind it. And it was bound to end in tragedy, but you keep hoping there's another way around it, and there's not. He was a doomed man, and he, he, what the death he got was mercy, and it's just truly horrific that he got to, to that point. And the thing about this movie is that it sets up these characters so well. Like I said, you care about each individual character. You care about the relationships. And what I like is that you start off rooting for Seth and Veronica, and you hate Stathis, he just comes across as a creepy stalker. And they're very similar as they're both insecure and controlling in certain ways, but Theth gets worse throughout the movie, while Stathis, due to circumstances, gets a bit of a redemptive arc. And I just think that's a great way to subvert expectations. It doesn't play into the cl cliches as much as you'd expect it to, and I think it really works. Each character feels fully defined, and the performances just bring them to life so perfectly. Jeff Goldblum deserved an Oscar for this movie, and I, I mean that. This is an incredible performance. The fact that he brings so many quirky mannerisms to this character really works, and he's always able to bring a certain sense of humanity. No matter how bad it gets, you still see the person at the start of this movie in his performance, the way he talks, the way he looks, and I just think Jeff Goldblum absolutely nailed this role. And I do like how everything gets started based on his own insecurities and jealousy. I think it's a great thing when character drives the plot forward and not contrivances, and the way that gets heightened in the last act is just expert writing. Then you've got Gina Davis, who I think is excellent in this movie. Not saying she should have won an Oscar for this movie, only because it came out the same year as Aliens, but she should have been nominated. This is just a great performance. She's the one that brings the emotional weight to this movie. She's the one that sells you on the tragic nature of the story. And her cries and her screams, you just feel awful for her. And when she finds out that she's pregnant, you feel hopeless for her. And you feel terrified for her. And that one dream sequence is such a gross scene. Uh, but uh, Gina Davis is really great here. And John Getz, when I saw him, I thought he was the one guy from Die Hard. But no, I guess that was just a common look in the late 80s. But he's great in this movie. And like I said, I like the way the character's written. And he just plays every character beat so perfectly. But the biggest star of this movie is David Cronenberg. He directs this movie so perfectly, nobody could have done it like he did. You know, if this movie was made nowadays, they would rely on CGI and it would just look dated within a few years and it wouldn't work. But the fact that they use practical effects and they look as amazing as they do, just gives this movie so much, um, like life. It's never going to age because all these years later, it still holds up incredibly well. And the practical effects just enhance this movie in every way, and the way they use them throughout is absolutely masterful. Like I said, that scene at the end when the bug head comes out of Jeff Goldblum's head, and it's so gross, and it's awesome, and I can't believe they actually made all that. This movie has lots of gross, slimy stuff in it, and it's so effective in every scene it's present in, and I also found this movie to be the perfect length. At just over 90 minutes, it never feels rushed and it never drags. It uses every minute effectively and doesn't waste a single one. So I love that about this movie. It's a really perfectly paced and structured movie. The more you think about it, the way it sets everything up, the payoff, the way the body hole from one scene to the next gets worse. I do want to say that one scene where she actually hugs him. Like, that just shows you how much the character loved him by that point. Because if I was whole, I would see him and be like, 
by and run as far away as possible because my goodness in that scene just really gross um what was i saying um yeah perfectly structured perfectly paced perfect lengths amazing practical effects and i love the production design and the way that teleportation parts look i love how when he gets out of them, there's that fog on the ground. I love the sound of this movie, and the music by Howard Shaw enhances every scene it's present in. This is a perfect movie by every means necessary. It might not be your kind of movie, but it is so damn great. This is body horror at its absolute finest. It is body horror at its most effective because it paces itself so perfectly. You're just dreading the next scene. And when it gets to the next scene, you're on edge, you're disgusted. And the next scene only gets worse from that point forward until a really gruesome finale. Every character is written to perfection. The performances bring them to life so perfectly. It's incredibly well directed by David Cronenberg. This is just a whole masterpiece. There's no other word for it. It is one of the best movies ever made. I'm going to go ahead and give The Fly a 9 out of 10. I guess you can say this movie was pretty fly for a white guy. Anyways, what did you think of The Fly? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned for some more videos soon and Gavin out.